Napa know-how. A Napa guy knows more isn't always better. Unless we're talking about full-size vans. These beasts do more than get you from A to B. They have so much space a man can live in it. With shag carpeting, water bed, and a sweet lava lamp, these mobile abodes have all the comforts of home. With quality parts and plenty of Napa know-how, you can keep the original tiny house running longer, stronger. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. This is your host, Lorraine Nightheart, and you have reached Venus Unplugged. And what we do here is all things Venusian, whether it be the archetype of Venus as the principle of love and relatedness, beauty, um, sorrows, personal relationships, artistic endeavors, whatever involves Venus, particularly myth and dream, the anima and animus in, uh, within us, and discovering and remembering that's the most important thing. I, w- I want to help people remember the principle of Venus and not get caught up in the collective image of what it is because that is not what she is. She certainly has her royal get-ups to wear, that's for sure, but uh, that's not what the feminine is necessarily is. So we need to really begin to discover what is the nature, both within a male, his anima, and within women. And that's what part of this myth is about. We're concluding the myth of Inanna. And Inanna is one of the the oldest and longest poems in uh, in the history of humanity, and it's her journey into uh, the underworld. So Inanna... I left it off, and Dumuzi, remember, she comes up from the underworld, and he's kind of sitting on her throne, one leg thrown over the arm and, and whooping it up, right? So she's not so thrilled about that. So she thinks it's a great idea because when we come up from the underworld, someone must replace or be replaced into the underworld. No empty spots, no parking spots in the underworld, okay? Uh, and uh, so at first she looks at should it be her children, and she looks around her kingdom, and then she comes up on her, on her beloved, and there he is. He hasn't shed a tear. Now, for anyone who has a heart, and we're suffering, and we see that someone doesn't at least suffer a little with us, we get angry because it's it's not related. You don't feel a little bit of my suffering. You don't have empathy for me. You don't want to relieve some of it. So people will belittle and say, oh, that's no big thing. But in fact, it is a big thing. To you, it is a big thing. And it's not for anyone else to say what is big or small or great or sorrowful. Um, it's whether somebody is going to have compassion, no matter what the boo-boo may be. So Inanna challenges, because uh, she's made her her descent, and she's endured the suffering. She's met her dark sister, her own dark side. And perhaps she even wants the Muzi to uh, develop strength and wisdom. But he just, he goes for the old scapegoating trick, and then he then he uh, he fights and he betrays, and his need to descend into the underworld himself, his need to find a relationship to the inner feminine, who he can accept non defensively, and revere as equal. Thus, the stage is set. He's going to hell. And maybe that's what happens in personal relationships when we get so hurt. We want the person to go to hell. Maybe it's not hell. Maybe it's we want them to be initiated. We want them to grow. We want them to be able to relate. We don't want them just running off into the puer state of eternal voidness or the puella, eternal girlness. No. It's important to be initiated. As a matter of fact, this week, there's going to be a whole lot of initiations, whether they last for a minute or they begin something that may be with you for months, 
whatever it is, this is one big nanny year week, okay, the year itself too, but this is kind of separates where where we're going, what is happening here. And don't be afraid of that. That means you've been chosen. That means you are worthy to be tested. And when we're worthy to be tested, we are about to get a whole lot stronger. So his his uh his prayers, nothing works, right? And so the die is cast and then the realization that Dumuzi is no longer welcomed on earth. So Ainana and Dumuzi's mother and his sister begin to weep for his fate. It's so sorrowful. And Ainana has been denied her beloved consort, even if it was her own willful act, because she was the one who set him up that way. And we all know that one. We we were in such a rage. We want someone else to feel our pain, and then when they have to separate from us to go into that initiation, well, then we feel another pain. So that's what begins to happen. But then, uh, Gestiana, who is a mortal, and is even in more grief stricken for her brother. So what she does is she offers to take his place in the underworld. So this isn't like Christ hanging on the cross. This this is much more personal. She offers herself courageously, and she's accepting her own destiny for one man she cares for the most, her brother. And her motivation is human passion, love, and grief. And guess the Anna's name means vine of heaven. And it is thought of in this myth as the wise woman. The vine of heaven is the wise woman. And as the wise woman is in service to human dimensions, she does what she can to redeem the one lost to the underworld. And she's willing to be cut down herself. She does not flee from her fate, nor does she uh, denigrate the goddess of fate, as does uh, Gilgamesh, which is another myth, Uh, and the patriarchal. She volunteers. And in this courageous consciousness, she ends the pattern of scapegoating by choosing to confront the underworld herself. And that's a powerful image. No scapegoating. Take the hit. Because you'll win. You'll get gold. You'll get scared to death too, but in the end you'll get gold. So she's also, this Gestiana is, is the result of and the embodiment of the whole initiation process, which is what this whole myth is about. She feels very personally, and she can lovingly relate as partner of the masculine. She's also willing to serve both the light and the dark aspects of her own depth and of the goddess. She has not made her descent herself, but there is no struggle between her with life. Oh, it's good and evil. She doesn't struggle against it. She accepts it as both. So that's a very important fact. There's no struggle. So what is it about descent? You know, what what does it mean to psyche? What what is it? How is it a tool in our life? Because we're constantly uh, being called towards initiation or growing up or. Uh, discovering, you know, uh, who we are in the depths of us. But if we don't have a society or a culture that understands this and works with it and gives us stories and images to work with, it just falls fallow. It just seems like we're depressed or in a bad mood or food allergies or whatever it is that's dragging us down instead of, whoa, I'm being called 
bidden or unbidden, the divine is always behind it or within it. See, Psyche knows. And she wants us to become conscious also of her, of her world, what, what makes us suffer on a deeper level, not on a surface level, not what the ego, the ego is constantly tricking us to, what our values are, but when we deeply know what we value, you become a very different person. And uh, you live differently. So all descents provide you know, entry into different levels of consciousness. And they can enhance life's creativity. That's why we can have what, uh, like right is block. That's not really right is block. That's really a, a, a stage of initiation where we're going into the depths of the unconscious and what is in there. But people just get depressed and they stay stuck and they won't go down into the depression, into the underworld, into the unknown. Of course you're terrified. But you're there anyway. And you'll get something by doing that. But all descents imply suffering. And the avoidance of suffering is foolish. If it is the time of, of suffering, and what are we suffering? We're suffering a, tre- a, a treasured belief about ourselves or another person. Or, you know, our Ten Commandments don't really get us through life or don't really work. Or a talent that wants to be born that we have been resisting and giving to the rest of the world finally wakes up and we're terrified. You see, we're also terrified of our magnificence. And we're definitely, definitely terrified of love. One quote from Jung, and he said, "You know, when when you meet someone and and it is the beloved, and you fall in love, what most people do is they turn and they run, because that's the closest they're ever going to be to God, and they can't take it. So that's interesting to watch. They take the second best, not as much of a challenge. They just want to be happy, and that's dangerous." because you're not going to grow. So it's part of these initiation rites or these descents. It's letting go of illusions and old, outworn patterns. Arishka Gal, an honest dark sister, she's like Kali, who through time and suffering, and she's pitiless, grinds down all distinctions in her undiscriminating fires. And yet, heaven, and yet heavens forth new life. This is, the, this is the cycles of life. Remember when I first started? Uh, little did I know what I was starting. I probably would have ran like hell if I had any common sense, but I did not. And my spiritual teacher would go on and on about cycles within cycles, and I would think, oh my goodness, how many cycles can there be? And now I understand a little bit of what she meant. So, you see, Inanna, in adherence to a pre-ethical natural law, it's an acknowledgement that life is inconsistent and that there are cycles. It's not pathological to wrap the partner in an act of loving and caring embrace like Inanna and then uh, go back down, being disinterested. And going back, and she has to replace her initiation. And very often, when we're so angry or disappointed with somebody, we're calling them into being initiated. We call them out. Now, you go be initiated. You go wake up to what you've unconsciously been acting out. Or the negative animus, which I think I'm going to talk about next week, uh, really has... Uh, the, the animus is the masculine side of, of the, the woman, and there's a positive and negative animus, and the negative animus is when the woman is cold and opinionated and judgmental. She thinks it's fact, she thinks it's truth, but there's nothing to it. There's no humanity, no warmth of humanity. And this is a, 
a, a myth about first the goddess is willing to sacrifice and meet her dark older sister, which is the old version of the myth, more primitive, or what we would see as the collective unconscious. So when we when we go through these initiations, that we get the aha moment, or we get a dream that frees us, or we do a piece of writing or some artwork or dance or movement. We just have a joyful event. Well, we go buy a pair of red shoes, whatever it is that, you know, brings up the return. So in in order to find gold or enlightenment, as they say, you know, hates as the bringer of all good things. So in the Ileusion Mysteries, that's what they're discovering. Beautiful indeed is the mystery given us by the blessed gods. Death is for mortals, no longer an evil, but a blessing. So when we're not caring as human beings, right? We're not caring first and foremost about relatedness to the outer other nor to a collective uh, imperative. Seeing this way, which is initially so frightening because it cannot be validated by the collective. See, that's part of what's so terrifying. The collective agrees, well, we should all be happy and we get what we want and the universe is going to agree to everything. And when suddenly the old switcheroo, when it's time to go into the depths, very little. It's, it's like, oh, well, you go. You know, that's unfortunate. It must be your karma. No, it's my it's my call to initiation. Nobody can say what someone's karma is or isn't. It's a very complex system. It's not, you know, what comes around goes around. It's not that at all. So very often, what can appear as depression, uh, bad luck, uh, a calling, I need to be quiet, I need to introvert. Now, this is particularly terrifying for extroverts, the call to introversion. And, and, and for introverts, there's nothing more pow- pa- painful than getting up and out there. It's terrifying, right? But when we're, when we're called to this initiation, we are called towards the possibility of a totally new perception, a new pattern, a creative perspective, and we are always in a state of never-ending exploration. It's radical, and it's dangerous, and it's innovative, but not evil. It may feel terrible or or ugly or why is this happening to me? Because our defenses are so strong. But with the attitude of sacrifice, you'll be surprised what begins to happen. I surrender to this. I sacrifice. I know there's so much more of me that I know nothing about. Whether it be angel or monster, doesn't matter. It will be transformed because it's there anyway. But this knowledge, it, 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 it implies destruction. We have to have destructive and transformative. It's not destruction for destruction's sake. It's to transform. So it's a new cycle of reality. And, and this is incredible. This knowledge is so hard to endure. Knowing this basic reality permits a woman to give up trying to be agreeable to parental and animus imperatives and ideals. It's like hitting rock bottom from where they are irreverent. And the same is true uh, for males. When they, when they give up, the, they do a tour of duty in the underworld willingly. Something huge is going to change in their life. So with the with the masculine 
the, the, ma- the, the major difference, the masculine development, is that, you know, actually until recently, and then usually only in the second half of life, most men uh, have not needed to go into the repressed depths once they've initially freed themselves from their childhood and identified with the ideas of the culture because they've been supported by the outside world without inner dissonance. And they suffer greatly for that. And that is what the modern man is discovering. And with great courage, they're beginning to explore and beginning to say, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this because I need to be whole. I don't want to be a son of the patriarch. So, for a long time, there were no adequate masculine wholeness patterns in the collective that was sanctioned to form a model of the masculine ego development. And as the heroic ego idea is also found inadequate, it's not enough. Just fighting outwardly. Got to go into that, that journey within. More and more men are forced to relate differently to their own depths and to dare the individual descents that permit them to reclaim repressed instincts and image patterns. So this whole blame it on the patriarch, or it, it's, no, the ones that are being called, they're doing it. And you can't recognize it because you haven't done it. If you haven't been there, you don't know when somebody else has been there. But when you've been there, it doesn't happen just once. And as I said, it can happen in a, in a second. It can happen in a dream. It can happen in a, a creative body of work, whatever way it's done. So, you see, men, they, they haven't made peace with Medusa, you know, the snake-headed goddess in themselves. And we'll see the feminine sexually as something that fascinates them, but also as the source of their self-undoing. And they try to protect themselves against this frightening power by destroying the monster. But they unconsciously incite her. Or they incite the Medusa woman in their lives to retaliate by castrating them physically and psychologically. And a man who desires a positive relationship to a woman's dark moon sexuality must make the descent into his unconscious Listen to the willing agony, agony of the, in this case, the decapitated uh, Medusa or Inanna hanging on a meat hook, crucified on a hook. And they have to reach out with sympathy to her pain and heal the wounds of her rejection. And we told him, we turn whole within himself to the upper world. And after the hero has provided his separation from his mother... He must reestablish a loving relationship to his inner dark feminine. Until he can do this, he'll remain trapped in a web of destructive sexual relationships. Remember that quote that I told you a friend of mine um, reminded me of that what Jung said that the man's longest journey is from his mother to the front door. It's easy enough to remember, but it is the separation. So Inanna's myth is a is a progress or a process of growth. You know, she she initially remembers she has her throne and her bed, and then she has her sovereignty and her sexuality. She gets it all. Okay, then to be queen. uh, And then uh, she brings home the me, which are the laws, the cultural laws. And then she has her consort, who can then be king, and to be a wife and a mother, and then to become whole by accepting her darker self. So nobody's getting out of Dodge without some tour of duty in the underworld. So when she meets uh, her sister, her dark sister, she knows the reality that all changes in life demand sacrifice. So if you choose scapegoating, it's not going to fly. Accept your responsibility. 
it may not have been your fault, but where did you participate? It didn't come out of the blue. So this is what the, what the nature of the uh, individuation is. You can individuate if we're blaming the world and we're scapegoating others, and, and it's impossible. It's really a bad idea, actually, to... We we need to sacrifice in ancient times. Okay, you could do it with a goat, or you could uh, pay money, or you could you know sacrifice in other ways. But in today's world, no, no, no. There's there's too much consciousness, and we're claiming the consciousness. So if you're going to claim the consciousness, I guarantee you, you're going to be initiated. You have to be. You can't take without giving back. Right. The universe may want to give you everything, but the, so the underworld is going to take it and transform you. So as above, so below. That's one of the meanings of that. Because it's a cycle. So very often what happens is, remember when Inanna comes up from the underworld and she has this right to survive, but she's ravenous. She's not a beautiful maid anymore. She's not the daughter of the fathers. But she's ugly and she's selfish and she's ruthless. And she's willing to be very negative, willing not to care. And when you get to a place where you don't care, that's pivotal. Something is happening. All your dreams and your hopes and your illusions and delusions have been crushed. And that's the return of the power shadow. When it's used consciously, we know what we're up to. It turns to wisdom. It's not just, just a destructive force that just wants to destroy. But it takes a lot of healthy ego or consciousness to allow this kind of beast, this pure power energy to live without devouring us or being used inappropriately. But Inanna shows us how to do that by her willingness to give up the position She's not asking one of her uh, kingdom. She, she doesn't ask her husband. She demands from her husband afterwards. But she does it first. You have to know what it's about. So the experience of the soul through our personal feelings and intuiting this relationship is in the concrete and it's here and now. What is valued is the is the feel of the moment of joy and pain. Not the abstract ideas of remote heavens and unending perfection that we aspire to. No. Your divinity is in your humanity. Shadow and light. That's where the divinity is. Because we're here. Wherever we go after this, that's where we're going to go. But while we're here, we're here. So when we begin to accept that pain is a valid part of life's process, it's no one's fault. It's just a fact of existence. This takes us out of the whole patriarchal adversary scapegoating perspective that blames someone or something and wants it to be removed uh, or wants something actively done with it. Instead, we have to trust the participation mystique of the deepest levels of the consciousness as a process of the goddess. Sometimes even if it makes us feel the pain and seems to aim towards death and depression, it makes us feel like our own inadequacy to bring about change. And there we wait. We wait with patience. Going deeper and waiting within together with the goddess as time is ready to decree a somewhat a kind of a fate and that's going to be happening a lot this week 
So I guess in one sense it's like, be still and know that I am the divine feminine, says the goddess. So don't jump to conclusions and don't scapegoat if you can or notice what scapegoating is about and allow yourself. You won't know it at the time, but if you're being cool, believe me, the heavens know. Psyche knows. It's not there to destroy you. It's there to make you whole. Because of the joy and the happiness, which, yes, we deserve but also it's to, to the degree of its opposite in order for that to be balanced. And when that moment, you know, a time for all seasons comes, go. You'll be back. Bye-bye.